do you build a parish youth team or, you know, sometimes known as youth ministry teams or whatever you want to call it. So the first thing we need to do is we need to know our community. We need to provide the invitation to our incoming leaders. And then we need to give clear expectations. There are three areas. So the first, knowing your community. It's always good, especially when you're moving into a new context, to really get to know the community and how things run and operate and that sort of thing before we go straight into inviting people to be leaders in a team. Uh, I've often had experiences where, um, you know, where we can jump the gun too early and you get particular people involved in a team and, and you can begin to learn that they have strengths in different areas and that perhaps bringing them into a leadership team wasn't the right thing for the team or it wasn't the right thing for the individual. So, uh, so having that sort of savviness to, um, to begin to read the community and read what, what you need for that context is a good thing. So we want to identify the skills and qualities that we need for our particular leadership team in our parish context and um, consider the qualities of an effective leader and, uh, and how they will be beneficial to this community. Our leaders set the tone for our ministry experiences. So, um, and but so uh, they, they need to be open and have the ability and the tenacity to to be flexible and to perhaps not always do things how they would want them to be done. But they're able to collaborate and work with the team. And um, and it's always important to just ask around the community and see who would be a good person for that. So. Ask your priest, consult with them. Who do you think a good leader would be for this experience? Ask your youth ministry manager, ask your, ask your peers, ask current leaders. And then what you can do together as a team, instead of just saying, oh, this person could be a good leader and just jumping straight into inviting them, is actually start to test that a little bit and, and just observe, maybe invite them along to something and give them the opportunity to help out with something. And start to go from there, and uh, and so we don't want to jump straight into just bringing um, people into a team. Not everyone um, needs to be a leader or should be a leader um, at, at like at, at some particular given moment in their life. Sometimes people just need the opportunity to receive, and so um, so putting someone straight into a leadership role is not always the best thing for them. Saint Paul talks about. I hope it's Saint Paul. Paul or Peter talks about uh, not laying your hands on a newly converted person. That means um, not giving them, you know, oh, well, that, that's in reference to ordination, but I think it works. It's like, don't give too much responsibility to someone who's new to the community just because we think they'd be a great leader. So uh, the third, the second area is to provide the invitation. So uh, you want to make this special. I remember one day um, we video called FaceTimed or whatever, um, this person that we wanted to invite to be a leader. And we had all of our team there and we called this person up, we FaceTimed them and we just said, hey, we think you're awesome. We would love to invite you to be part of our team. And this person thought it was really fun and uh, and felt really encouraged and, and just thought, oh, wow, these people see something in me. And so, you know, find fun ways to make people, um, you know, feel that, you know, we do see them. And that's true. We do see that we see something in them and we want to acknowledge that. So celebrate that. The third area is, you know, look, we've invited someone to be part of a team and now we want to make sure that the expectations are clear. You know, we don't want to overwork people. We don't want to overcommit people. We want them to know, look, this is what we're thinking. Um, how does that suit your life? You know, so some clear expectations are um, to say, look, this is how often we're going to meet. We really appreciate if you could be at these you know, weekly gatherings where we gather and pray and plan and do that sort of thing together. Um, you want to provide uh, opportunities for, for training and say, hey, look, if you don't have all the skills right now, um, that's okay. Uh, we want to walk with you and journey with you as you grow in confidence in this area or that area. And we're going to provide some training. Um, and then the other thing is, well, probably to start with is to make sure you're use, utilizing their strengths allow them to serve in the areas that they're passionate about and that they want to, and then they want to use as, you know, it's their gifts. They know how to use them. Um, and then it's important as we go along to always be open to feedback, to say, Hey, look, you've been volunteering with us for a little while. How's your experience going? Is there anything that we can do to help, um, you, um, grow as a leader or help you to, um, lead in these particular contexts. And then, 
Uh, this is really underrated, but I think we need to do it more. But it's celebrate together more. Celebrate your wins and be with each other in your losses, you know. Um, uh, eat together, pray together, have fun together, go do social things together. It's important that you celebrate each other. And that's where we could, you know, towards the end of a year when we've been serving together is we can, um, you know, bring in um, the parish community and say, hey, look, we're offering a Thanksgiving Mass where one of the special intentions for this Mass is we're going to pray for our team who's been serving all year. And so those are three tips that I would give to help start a youth ministry team.